Happy Sunday, everybody. Thought I was coming at you late. That's because I am. And the reason being is because I've been doing gym chores all day, honey-do lists at the gym, putting in some flooring, recalking some things, installing some new bathroom stuff. Been a busy day. But not coming to you from the mini chair this week. I'm coming to you from Midtown. All right. Let's dive right into it. If you get dizzy, if you're watching this, it's because I got a thing that's like following me. All right, notes. Just want to reflect. Coach's schedule changed this past week. And some things I want you guys to uh, be looking for, not necessarily looking for, but being aware of, would be <clears throat> our full-time coach is getting around more. Covering each other, both gyms, uh, sw swapping classes once in a while. One of my goals, if you will, is because I've been having such a good time getting between the classes, both gyms, and everybody. I want everybody to experience it. Don't want to be selfish, keep it to myself. So you'll see some of the South coaches maybe bouncing over the Midtown. You'll see some Midtown coaches maybe jumping over to South, helping out, covering classes, this and that. So don't be surprised. All right, we're all working together as a team. Double Edge Fitness is one business, and we're only three and a half miles apart. So we are working together as a team, and I think there's benefits for everybody involved, uh, getting around all the classes, meeting all the members, uh, getting different points of view and perspective, uh, coaching cues, this and that. So you, I see members getting around to both gyms, which is super rad. Just be aware, coaches will be getting around both gyms and the premise of most of that is like covering people have time off traveling kids sick whatever so just don't be surprised if you're seeing a little bit more of that going on another quick thing been keeping tabs on the towels here midtown mostly and it seems to me that after counting up some towels the towels may have grown some legs, all right? They might have made their way home with one of, you know, some of y'all. I have had members bring back a fat stack of towels. You know, they don't want to be sweating all over their car. They're wiping sweat off, whatever. You know, if some towels migrated home, then you're aware of that? Do me a solid and bring them on back, all right? I do know what happens, not a huge deal, but the towel situation at Midtown is one that we stay on top of and there's laundry being done all day and I've just noticed the amount of overstock we usually have, we're probably down about 40, 50 towels. So if you have some, feel free to drop them on back by the gym, all right? Next thing, I had a few folks ask me why are we doing a 30-day trial for new members? And I never really thought about explaining it, but here's why. The biggest reason why is over the years, I have seen people who have committed to the first month get in, you know, 12, 15 sessions that first month completely changed the direction of their life. Lots of people started here over the years. Lots of people started here. And if during that first month is one of the most pivotal opportunities for them to change the entire direction of their life and their health. And we wanna give the folks of Reno, your friends, your family, the opportunity to be able to come in and kickstart that journey. That's the biggest reason why we're doing 30 days. A lot of places give away a class, give away a week. Uh, we truly believe in our heart that if you come in here and you give it a good solid month, that you can completely change the direction of your life and your health. Plus, 30 days is also enough time to feel us out and for us to feel you out. It's not too often that, you know, we don't feel that the person trying the gym is a good match, but 
we want to make sure that you enjoy the gym, right? No risks, no strings attached, nothing like that, that you enjoy the experience. You get to see a broad sample of the programming at the gym. You get to meet different coaches. You get to meet the community, get to know people, build new relationships. All this stuff can truly happen in 30 days. And with that, completely change the entire outlook of your health span in a very massive and meaningful way. So that's why. That simple. We want to change people's lives. We want to help you get healthy and fit. We want Reno to get healthy and fit. Why not jumpstart it? You know what I'm saying? So that's why we're doing 30 days. We're going to keep doing 30 days for probably a really long time. We just feel it's the best opportunity for people to change their lives. And if they don't stick with us, hopefully they learn something that they can take and use on their health journey. That's simple. All right. A couple folks, actually more than a couple, it's been pretty cool. People have been getting their in-body scans. Now, to be clear, if you're a member of the gym or even on your 30-day trial, I would like for you to get an in-body scan. Somebody asked me the other day, how much does it cost? It costs, well, you got to be a member. You have to be participating in the gym. And it costs nothing, right? We haven't charged for an in-body scan in I don't know how long. Non-members come in, it's 50 bucks, but it's, it's, it's a tool for you all to be able to guide your metabolic health. You know, it's one of the objective measurements to gauge your metabolic health. Knowing objective data on your body fat and your muscle mass are two very, very important things for you guys to have, for your coach to have. And with that, I've had the opportunity to engage in, with quite a few people in figuring out exactly how much protein they need to intake, and I love it. This is the stuff that is going to improve your health and fitness, okay? We got to train hard. We got to fuel right, and I know... I got to get back to the whiteboard and do my lecture on why I think training is 1A and nutrition is 1B. Priority 1A and priority 1B. They go hand in hand. And I'm going to get to the whiteboard soon and I'm going to break down in a lesson on why I think that way. Why that, that, why that, and how that works in my own mind. All right? <laughs> But those of you who get in-body scans, you got a question on your nutrition, your protein intake, by all means, hit up your coach, hit me up, slide into my DM, shoot me an email, give me a phone call, shoot me a text, come see me in person, kick it old school like that. I am more than happy and honored and excited to help you figure out exactly how much protein you need, what kind of protein you should be eating, and how to optimize your skeletal muscle gains. All right? So keep it up. On that topic, this week, and this is, might not seem like a big number to you, but this week I had three people, three separate people, unsolicited, come up to me and ask me if they should be taking creatine. It's not too often I get three specifics on a topic. I was wondering if it's going around in the news cycle. I don't know, but it's not too often if you should be taking creatine. So, took the liberty, put together a blog post on our website, all things creatine, the what, the why, the how. In short, I do think almost everybody, now there are some cases where you might not want to take creatine, but it's going to be guided by your nephrologist, maybe your primary care. Perhaps you only have one kidney and you need to watch your protein intake and your creatine. That could be a situation, all right? I am not a medical professional, but that could be a situation in when you might not want to be supplementing creatine. Okay, or if you have kidney failure of some degree, these are, these are things outside of my scope. So outside of that stuff, if you're a healthy, functioning, just trying to live your best life human being like myself, yes, creatine is the most research-supported supplement there is. And I think everybody outside of what I just said should be taking it. Now, it can help you improve um, muscle and strength endurance. 
cognitive function, bone health. It has anti-aging properties. Okay, it can help with mood, your depress depressive symptoms. Uh, it can help with metabolic health. Taking creatine is going to increase your glucose uptake in your muscles. Right, it is one of the safest supplements with uh, research has shown it to be have no adverse side effects on kidney liver and heart health again i'm not willing to say you should or shouldn't if you have some things going on you need to talk to your health care provider about that but i do believe that the mass majority regardless of your age especially if you're getting older because you're trying to hold on to bone density you're trying to hold on to muscle mass you need to be taking creatine i believe in the research supports three to five grams per day based on body weight and size. So me, 200 pounds, 40 years old, I take five grams of creatine the majority of days. All right. I usually don't take supplements on the weekend. It's like kind of the time off period, but Monday through Friday, one little scoop creatine. That's what I do. All right. Got a little zivia here. So Roto got a whole blog put together on our website. There's a link in the newsletter for it. If you want to dive into more of the research, got the, all this citations and all the fancy stuff there. So yes, what was that? I don't know. So take creatine. It's good for you. All right. Good for you. Good for you. Good for you. On that topic, I am carrying some, I've decided to bring back some high end, high quality supplements. These supplements are from Pure Encapsulations and Designs for Health. Arguably two of the best supplement companies on the planet. Okay. You got arguably. I'm willing to argue that topic. Why haven't I carried a lot of these in the past? One, they're expensive. Okay. You, quality is expensive. High quality is not cheap. But I have had some requests from folks to carry some of these because they asked me what I take. And I do take some peer encapsulation things. I do take some designs for health stuff. And I am, what's happening, what I'm seeing is some of the other supplement companies' prices are inching up. And I always try to get the best product for the best price. The cleanest, healthiest, something I put in my own body for you guys at the best price that I can find. And if I'm not carrying it in the gym, Chances are, well, either I can't get it, one, or I don't believe in it. So basically 100% of anything sold at Walmart, Costco, where else? I think it's all garbage. You can fight me on that. I think it's garbage. Yep. Actually, well, maybe they can sue me. I don't know. I just... A lot of these commercial supplements I do not like. I think they have a bunch of fillers, a bunch of garbage in them. Uh, I don't think they're made in the best processing ways. I think you get what you pay for, and it's just not something I'm willing to put in my body after the research that I've done and what I know about the supplement industry. So in the gym, in the ranking of what I think is best, I have First Form, Transparent Labs, Pure Encapsulations, Designs for Health. These are the supplement brands that we're going to continue carrying. I have creatine from Designs for Health. It was at a great price point for you guys. Uh, I was very excited to see. So I'm bringing that in to complement uh, our creatine from First Form. Why am I only carrying those two? Well, one, very simple. All the research supports all you need is creatine monohydrate. If the creatine you're buying has some sort of fancy stuff, oh, best absorbed creatine, blah, 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 blah. It's all bullshit. Okay, it's all crap. All you need is creatine monohydrate in its simplest form. Now, why can't you find in its simplest form? Because supplement companies always add a little proprietary blend to it to add uh, more margin to it. It's that simple. So they say it absorbs better. It, there's no research on any of that. All the research for the last 20, 30 years has been done on creatine monohydrate in its simplest form. It is very cheap to produce. There's not a lot of money in it, but it's highly effective. It's probably one of the best 
least expensive supplements you can take to increase your health and fitness. That simple. All right. So that's all I sell. It's creatine monohydrate. If it has anything else in it, I think it's crap. People ask me, why don't you carry Transparent Labs creatine? Because they claim to have something else in it. It's like another 20 bucks a jug. And I just, nope, not doing it. So we got Designs for Health and First Form. Those are the two creatines that we're carrying. All right. Holy cow. Let's move on, people. Next thing. I have a link in the newsletter to Andrew Huberman, the Huberman Labs, most recent podcast on microplastics. I think it's worth your time to listen to it. It's quite interesting. I'm not one to throw like fear mongering over all this stuff in the environment. We're all going to just blow up and die, blah, 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 blah. I don't know. Who the hell knows? It's exhausting, but it is something we can be mindful of. And there's actually meaningful, simple things you can do to reduce your exposure to microplastics. Interesting thing about this is when before Claire was born, my lovely wife told me she wanted reverse osmosis. We're getting rid of all the plastic Tupperware. We're going to glass and no more plastic cutting boards, you know, all this stuff. And I was like, why are you being such a hippie? Killing me. I had to swallow my own words the other day. I had to tell her I was sorry because I was wrong. She was right. I guess the sooner I get to wrap my head around that, probably the better off I'll be. But she was 100% right back then. This was eight, nine years ago. So a lot more current research has come out. Andrew Huberman lays this out beautifully in his podcast about how they're finding nanoplastics accumulated post-mortem in people's brains, like significant amounts um, in women's like ovaries, follicular uh, organs, and in men in their testicles. So there are blood-brain barriers in all three of these areas that sh stuff's not supposed to cross. And these nanoplastics are getting across these barriers and accumulating in our bodies. And now, because plastics became super popular in like 1950s, if I'm referencing that right. And since then, you now have people, if you're born in the 1950s, you're born in when plastic was hot. You remember Tupperware parties? I remember Tupperware parties. They were hot in the 90s, 80s and 90s. <sighs> but those people born in the 50s, so they're 30, trying to have a tup Tupperware party in the 80s and 90s, you know, build a multi-level marketing business. That was like the early days of multi-level marketing scams. <clears throat> but these folks are the first people to truly spend a lifetime with microplastics. And now they're dying. Not to alarm, these people are hitting the average age of death. 74, 76, right? So now that these people born in the 50s are starting, you know, and they're examining their brains. They're examining apparently their testicles and their you know, ovaries and whatnot under high powered microscopes. And they're finding accumulation of microplastics in their body. These microplastics have been shown to act as estrogens. They've been shown to bind to estrogen receptors in both men and women. Interesting. Uh, that can have a lot of negative connotation for both men and women. So it's a very interesting podcast. I would listen to it. A couple key takeaways for me was don't drink water out of plastic bottles ever. That is a massive source of microplastics. You buy some bottled water at the gas station, whatever. You don't know how long it's been sitting in there. You don't know how far across the country it's been sitting in the heat to get into that store. You don't know. It's impossible to know how long that water's been just sitting there festering in that plastic. So one of the most powerful things you can do is just don't drink water out of plastic anything anymore. Which, if you know me, that's another excuse for me to buy yet another Yeti mug. All right, so I have them everywhere strategically placed so I never have to drink out of a plastic bottle again. So that's a powerful one that you can uh, actively do and simple relatively simple uh 
don't get coffee in the styrofoam, the cups, the to-go cups, like, you know, Starbucks or whatever. You go and get your coffee, put it into something that is not plastic styrofoam. There's plastic that holds those cups together. That is another huge uh, source of microplastics in your, that can get in your body. So those are two like big ones. They're very doable, right? It's not crazy. Um, you have to listen to the podcast. There's a few other things, uh, potentially laundry detergent, your clothing. <sighs> oh, microwaving in plastic, just cause it's microwave safe and it's plastic, but then you heat up the plastic, gets in your food, just use glass. Yeah, so you get the point. This shit is everywhere, okay? It's everywhere. Try to limit it, be smart. Who knows if it's uh, gonna be the lead of our generation. Could be the lead of our generation. Uh, so, and, and just one other quick tidbit that affects my household is because Claire has Crohn's. Uh, there could be some correlation, maybe not causation, between microplastics and people with IBD and the inability to maybe remove microplastics from the body and or they might be causing inflammatory responses for people with IBD. So either way, uh, it's something that if you struggle with bowel issues, it's something, you know, maybe be a little extra mindful of. Obviously, with my daughter, we are going to be pretty mindful of it uh, with her. So I suggest listening to the podcast. Link is in the newsletter, or you can just go to the Huberman Lab and look at his episode of Microplastics. I do think it's worth your time and energy. <sighs> you know what? I think that's all I got for you. That's all I got for you guys today. Um, coming up real quick. That's what I want to touch on. Uh, holiday schedule. We're going to be closed Thanksgiving Day, day after Thanksgiving, and then Christmas Day, and then the day after. Let me confirm this real quick. Whatever those holidays are. Holidays, Christmas Eve, Christmas Day. I'll have to confirm Christmas for you because it's on a Wednesday. Might have to send out a gym poll how we want to throw down around Christmas time because fitness still needs to happen. But yeah, most current one, Thanksgiving, day after Thanksgiving. There might be a little something. Uh, maybe I might be doing something a little cray cray on Thanksgiving day or day after Thanksgiving. I do know that my family signed up for the turkey trot. I think it's the one downtown. So if that's the case, we might come down here and do some actual fitness and then go schlog the turkey trot. So just stay tuned, all right? Stay tuned on that. I'll give you, keep you guys posted on all things holiday fitness related. All right, I love you guys. Let's have a great week. Let's get fit. Let's make healthy food choices. And I will see you all next week. Peace. Love you guys. Good rest of your Sunday.